This is H.M. Jones. I'm reading from Monochrome, Chapter 7, Dreams or Nightmares. We just ended with Abigail being attacked. She and Ishmael fought her off her attackers. And now they're back in their room and they're kind of having an argument. So please listen and hopefully you enjoy. Her eyes were running and her voice cracked as she screamed nonsense at the one man she trusted in this sick world. It's this place. It's this terrible place. I feel like it gives people little choice but to be inhumane. And I never wanted to make that choice. It's not about whose life I took. Don't you get it? It's about what this world makes of me. I don't want to become what I'm not and I'm not a killer. Ishmael threw himself down on the bed. You're going to have to get used to it. That's just how it is here. It's you or them. In their case, these guys were sick bastards to start off with and got off on being in a place like this, I'm sure. Abigail sat on the corner of the bed and put her head in her hands. No, I don't have to get used to it. I'm not staying here. She felt the weight of the day on her body and mind, starting with being taken from her baby to the recent attack. Before she knew it, her body was racked with sobs. She was bloody, battered, scared, and she was longing for the life she almost ended. Ishmael scooted over to her, placing his hand on her back and gently patted her. I'm sorry, Abby. I can't even imagine how awful it was for you in there. How afraid you must have been. You're so brave. You're so tough. I'm just being an asshole. I told you I can't help myself sometimes, but I should try harder, especially at a time like this. I get mean when I'm scared, and seeing you like that scared the shit out of me. I thought I was too late. His touch was maternal, soft and soothing. Abigail's sobs subsided, but her fear but kept she kept her face buried in the bed, embarrassed by her vulnerability. It's just that when I realized what was going on, when I saw that man sitting over you, his hands tensed on her back. I wanted to make him suffer and I'm glad he is. Abigail wiped her tears with her away with palms, realizing just then her hands were still bloody and dirty. She sat up and faced Ishmael, fearful of the burden sound of his voice, and was surprised to see his black opals were watery. Ishmael, you saved me. I don't know how I'm... She reached toward him, but let her hand fall short. Even stranger than the tears in his eyes was his next reaction. He examined her face and laughed. What are you laughing at, you maniac? He tried to answer, but looking at her sent him into gales of laughter. His laughter shook the whole bed. Your face was all he managed to get out before falling to his side, rocking with laughter. Abigail raced to the cracked, dirty mirror hanging above the green ceramic sink in the corner of the room and immediately broke into crazy, loud laughter. She looked like an insane person. Her dark brown hair was tangled and uncombed, her eyes red and puffy, and her face was now streaked with blood and dirt. She probably just wiped the blood on her face when she was trying to dry her tears. She was still wearing her dress as a towel, and it too was smeared with dried blood and dirt. Ishmael was still laughing hysterically on the bed. Why didn't you tell me I look like a caveman butcher, you jerk? He shook with broken laughter, rolling on the bed. You do. His deep laughter and watery eyes were contagious. She couldn't control the flood of laughter fountaining from her, and every time Ishmael saw her, he chuckled anew. She knew they were laughing because there was nothing else to do except cry, so they laughed like maniacs. She went over to the bed, picked up a pillow, and smacked him with it. Stop laughing! He covered his head and laughed so hard he rolled off the bed onto the floor. She lay on the bed and peered over the side at, his, at the still chuckling Ishmael, sitting up and rubbing the back of his head where he hit it against the wall. His chest was heaving as he fought laughter. Breathing heavily, he reached up to put a crazy strand of curly brown hair behind her ear. You're going to need to use that sink. Please rinse off. The blood is going to make me vomit. His face was amused but pale. She smacked his hand away and went over to the sink, again letting the water run until it was yellow instead of orange. She washed her face, hands, and arms and rinsed her hair in the cold water. She turned around and was discomfited to see Ishmael was watching her intently. He was embarrassed to be caught and focused his eyes on the door. Uh, I was just going to ask you to step out for a second so I can wash up a little bit more. He searched the stained carpet of their room. Did you see my shirt? For the first time since the struggle in the bathroom, Abigail really saw Ishmael. His upper body was bare and covered in script-style writing, 
whole passages of indeterminate scrawl and permanently inked into his skin. He was more tattoo than skin. He was thin but fit. His skin was pale, especially in contrast to the black writing covering his torso. Abigail blushed when her eyes met the patch of hair just above his jeans on his abdomen. His skin was damp in spots from the shower and from rinsing off after the fight. His long hair was entangled from the fight and from being smacked with a pillow. He was gorgeous, in a rough sort of way, which she thought was the best kind of gorgeous. Pretty boys never appealed to her. Ishmael noticed her attentive stare and grinned. Like what you see? 